Okay, guys, so, so organ transplants. This is quite a scary a sentence. And if you don't know anyone that has needed one, you've probably seen the movie. Years of waiting lists, waiting for that organ that matches your own, and then after finally you get it, then there's still a chance that your body will reject it. It is estimated that in Europe, six new patients are added to the waiting list every hour. So organ transplant waiting list is a big problem. But I have a proposal, stem cells. Stem cells are very ordinary looking cells that do something very extraordinary. They are the only cells that are able to generate any cell type in your body. For example, right here we have some stem cells, come on guys, so, that will become neurons if they want to work with me. Yeah. yeah. So these are just stem cells that are just walking around, dividing, doing whatever they do whenever we scientists are not looking at them. And at some point, they start forming these arms or processes that will connect with their, with their partners and then form actually synaptic connections. And at the end, we will have a neural network ready to be studied. So this is super cool. Stem cells, if you ever need uh, some liver or some bone cells, we can just take some stem cells from you and get give you whatever cell type you need. There's only one tiny problem. Stem cells are actually quite uh, rare in the adult body. There's not that many of them. And usually they're in places that are very hard to get, such as your bone marrow. So, yeah. But in 2006, Mr. Yamanaka made the, <coughs> the discovery that changed the entire game. He grabbed some skin cells and by reprogramming, force them into becoming cells that behave like stem cells and are also able to give you any cell type you wish. This means that if the only thing that you need to do to become an organ donor is just to give some, some skin cells, wouldn't you just do it? Let's look at what would happen in a patient. So our patient has a sick heart. He needs something in his heart to make it work again. What we can do is just get some skin cells and out of these skin cells, reprogram, reprogram them into becoming stem cells. These stem cells are an exact match to the patient. So there's not going to be an issue of compatibility. He is a match to it himself. So if my patient has a genetic problem, then by using gene editing technologies such as CRISPR, I can fix the DNA damage and create a healthy cell. This stem cell then can give me healthy heart muscle cells that can be transplanted into the patient. On the other hand, if I have my patient's stem cells, I can create disease cells that look exactly like my patient. Out of these disease cells, I can study what is happening with this particular disease. What, what, what went wrong there? I can also grab and test any drugs in the marker, market, experimental or not, and see which of the drugs available are the ones that work best for my patient, and then treat him and hopefully get his heart back on track. All of this, Sounds a bit like way too far off, but it might be closer than you think. These cells here are stem cells that were uh, developed into uh, heart muscle cells in my lab where I work, and you can almost hear the beating of the heart. Boom, boom, boom. So, but how do you get this gigantic blob of cells into the into the patient? Last week, the UK, a lab in UK, gave us an answer. So they created this mesh and they infused it with stem cells that they then develop them into heart muscle cells. And this little mesh can then be transported into uh, uh, the heart of the patient and help the patient's heart beat just like a, a pacemaker. Moreover, this mesh can be infused with uh, drugs and that will then be released directly into the patient's heart and maybe even prevent the future degradation of his own cells. So this is super cool. <laughs> Stem cells have been developing at a super fast pace. And since the first human trial in 2014 for height sight loss, many trials uh, in humans have been popping up all, all the time. We have one for children, children cataracts, we have another one for multiple sclerosis, age-related sight loss, Parkinson's, HIV, spinal cord injuries. So, and many more are bound to come. This is a booming field. The only thing is that all of these clinical trials and some of the successes that we had with stem cell therapies have given hope to people that have felt hopeless for years, that never thought to have a possible cure for their diseases. Unfortunately, hopeless people and desperate people are very easy to take advantage of. 
And in the last few years, stem cell clinics, stem cell clinics, have popped up all over the world, in the US, but also here in Germany, that claim that for a few thousand years, they can provide you with miracle cures that will heal all your problems. The only problem is that these stem cell therapies have never been proven to work, were never tested, and we don't even know if they are safe. And sometimes the results were tragic. So I want to remind you that the clinical trials that I just showed you are the very first clinical trials using stem cell therapies. This means that these clinical trials are usually with a small number of patients for very specific diseases. And it's still gonna take us some time until we can uh, offer uh, guarantees for cures and even potential miracle cures. But stem cell technology is the potential to be amazing. It will definitely change the way that we do the medical research. It will change the way that we discover new drugs. And it will even change the way of how we understand human diseases. But it is our job, of you as a member of society, of me as a scientist, and together with our governments, to create new laws and legislations and actually define the ethical boundaries of what is needed for stem cell research. What is enough for protecting the patient, but also not limiting the advancement of stem cell therapy. So in the end, be aware of the scams of stem cell therapy, but also be hopeful and be excited about what the stem cell field research can provide you with in the future. Thank you.